in sports, the scoreboard doesn't tell the full story, but Netflix does. Stories about dads who happen to be world-class quarterbacks and a battle for the heart, soul, and direction of the multi-billion dollar business of F1. Whether you're a diehard fan or you're brand new, Netflix has the stories for every type of fan. You can watch these incredible sports stories like quarterback, F1 Drive to Survive, Untold, and many more now on Netflix. Welcome to the Scala Supporters Pembrokeshire Podcast. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Westra is Bester from the Scala Supporters Pembrokeshire. And uh, joining me, Lee G, as always, is Big M. How are you, Martin? I'm good, mate. I'm good. It's my middle child's seventh birthday today, so we've been having some uh, celebrations this morning. So, uh, how are you doing, bud? Yeah, it's my my middle boy's first uh, A level exam today. So very different ends of the child spectrum there, but <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I'd much rather be having a seventh birthday than worrying about are they getting their uh, A levels right. It's uh, yeah, and then again, I, I I half expected you to be dressed as a princess or something like you know, because that's what you do for yourself. Oh, you've girls. missed you've missed it, but I've just changed my top. You know that's that's, <laughs> that's what it is. You know, have you seen Despicable Me where Gru comes down like a big fairy princess? That that is me, hundred <laughs> percent. I think it would suit you, mate. I think it would suit you. We, I remember when at my uh, daughter was young and Frozen was was you know the thing to do back then, and they were. The Torch Theatre was doing a, a frozen, frozen sing-along thing, come in fancy dress. And the wife was like, that's oh, okay, I'll take her, I'll take her. So the daughter was going in fancy dress and the wife was like, no, no, I'm I'm not going in fancy dress, no, no. And then, and then my daughter went, well, if mum's not coming in fancy dress, dad can come in fancy dress. You can be Elsa. And, <laughs> and you know, you don't want to disappoint your daughter, but also you're sitting there and you're going like, "Ah, oh, come on, come on, love." We're... It's 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 not. I, let me be Sven. I can deal with Sven. Yeah, that's what that was my thought. I, you know, there were plenty of male characters in there, but no, she wanted me to be Elsa anyway. The wife went in the end, but yeah, the joys of seven-year-olds, my joys of seven-year-olds. Anyway, let's talk some rugby stuff. Let's talk this because there's still rugby going on. End of the season feels like so long ago for um, Scarlets, but down in the uh, down in the Championship Division Two. Oh, wait till we get to Division Two, man alive! Wait till we get to Division Two. But let's let's start with the Championship. So, um, like I say, every, every division is really starting to kind of hot up at the minute, and I know Narbeth. Uh, so results from Championship last weekend, Narbeth beat Tata Steel 36-3. Went with a very young side, lots of young players, um, and and did well, you know, for, for, for young players to come through and deliver a 36-3 win away in Tata Steel. All jolly good. Um, some big, hefty results. Uh, Trabanos forfeited a game against, but this is this is the championship. And you forfeit in a game, uh, just that beggar's belief on that one. Pontypool had a massive win over Cardiff Met, 66-24. Um, and then again, so we were talking about Cross Keys because Cross Keys and Narbeth were um, in an R in. So Cross Keys lost again to my state Quins. So it all got a little bit tasty. It all got a little bit fantastic. And then last night... Um, Ustrid Ronda against Pontypool. Now, did you see the? I, I saw the game on Twitter. I was kind of like watching little bits on Twitter. I missed the first ten minutes, and then I was following it after that. Did you? What did you make of it? Ah, uh, unreal. That's that's the only thing I, I can really say. Is like you know, start of the season. You know, obviously Pontypool were going to be the big runners. We knew that, hmm. but Ustrid. You know, they, we started the season again. You know. Narbeth Astra, that's how we started. And we're like, yeah, Narbeth should do um and they, they did on that occasion, but you know, the second half of the season, Jesus, Astra have really put a marker down on you know 
who they are and what they're going to be doing going forward. Because, mm. oh, it, it, just like I said last week, you know, that some of the games that we're having, the update, like Kidwell and Ancredic last week was massive. And this is absolutely another one again. Mm. It, you know, just getting those little notifications so when you think, whoa, what's going on? But yeah, this, you know, this isn't the script. Yeah. But, uh, oh. Well, at, at half time, there was something like, 22 10 up or, or like Ustrid were 22 10, uh, 10 up against Pontypool and they were ahead for the whole game and Ponty just keep chipping away and chipping away and chipping away and then it comes to the 78th minute and you're like are they going to hold out are they going to hold out Ponty are attacking drop goal and you're like oh my god absolutely I mean if you're Ustrid Ronda and you're like it's literally, you know, I think they kicked off and that was it then, it, you know, 31-29 up until, you know, two minutes to, to, to go and you lose 31-29. I just, you know, that's the that's the kind of game you want to see on, on telly and you want to be a part of because that just sounded like, you know, I was getting excited about it on Twitter, <laughs> which is yeah. the most ridiculous thing. You know, it, it is a shame that we we don't get to see these games. You know, obviously lower down, fair enough. It's you know it's very costly, but the odd championship game every now and then would be nice. And this would mm. have been, this would have been one of them. I mean, as, as the way Astrid is set up, you know, they, they can easily accommodate the you know the cameras and stuff. Mm. But uh, I was think I think it's the coach's last home game as well. He he's stepping down, and you know what a set what a send off. You know. It, so close, you know, 78 minutes mm. of basically beating a semi-professional team because that, that is what Pontypool are in comparison yeah. to yeah. everyone else. They are fully semi-professional. So to I come can... that close is, is mm. it's just stupid. You know, it's, it's, it's brilliant for us, Tred. You know, it's hopefully, you know, they'll use this second half of the season and this will be the, the kick on because I know they've always wanted to be the best team in the Ronda and they've always had, you know, three hockey fighting them for that. So mm. they they really are pushing on now, and they are they've set that milestone for themselves. Well, when you look at you know other results from last Saturday as well, yeah. So uh, Bargoid put fifty four points over Glamorgan Wanderers. Uh, so Neath didn't play last Saturday. And we're now so Bargoy they're now in second place with Neath in third. And you're like, how the hell did that happen? Do you know what I mean? They they've had a a, a decent run uh a second half of the season. Bargoy have. So but then Neath have got three games left to play. Like, how how on earth have Neath got three games left to play? Then you look at the fixtures that Neath have actually got left to play. So they play cross keys tonight. And then they've got Bethai on Saturday and then Ustrid Ronda um, again next week. And you just got, well, the way Ustrid Ronda have been playing, and then you go, oh, oh Lord, alive, you know? So we're a Bethai, I think. Yeah, so Cross Keys and Bethai, they dropped a bit further down. So they should be comfortable wins. But finishing with Ustrid Ronda, you know, that's, uh, I, I know Ustrid Ronda can't catch him, but that's going to be a cracking game to to finish with on that. Um, and then speaking of, of um, fixtures, Narbuth have got a game this evening away in Glamorgan Wanderers. So, uh, yeah. Normally you'd say that's a comfortable win for Narbuth, wouldn't you? But then midweek... You know who know who knows what happens midweek. Narbeth going to Narbeth need two points to overtake um, uh, Cardiff Met. So if they can get anything out of tonight's game, then be a minimum that they'll you know they'll be secured because Cardiff Met have uh, finished their season. So that's all looking good, and then Saturday. 
Narbeth final home game of the season, I believe. We just check that. Yeah, so last home game, last game of the season against Trabanos on the weekend, and that should be a comfortable win as well. So, uh, so yeah, what, what do you make of that then? So Glamorgan Wanderers tonight, and then Trabanos on the weekend. What's what's your thoughts on those? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm expecting two wins. You know, both uh, Glam and Trabanos are. You know, what are they bottom four in the table? And, you know, they haven't exactly done much this season. So, you know, no reason why uh, Narbeth can't do both of them. And, you know, two points to secure with fifth. Hopefully that'll be done tonight down in uh, down at the Memorial Ground, my favourite ground, Glamorgan Wanderers. I love it. I love how wide it is. It's brilliant. But, uh, you know, if uh, if it falls short for whatever reason, you know, Trabanus on the weekend, they should... They should hmm. wrap it up. Yeah. I, and you'd hope that that's, that's the focus. The weekend, um, bare minimum, they need... You know, finishing in fifth place, you know, behind Pontapool and Neath, you know, this there's, there's some good sides below Narbeth. So I I'd class fifth as a decent season for them this year. Um, I really would. But Yeah. We we've said before, you know, fifth was where they finished last season. But mm. with the progress that the teams above them have made, fifth is fifth again is an improvement, even though yeah. it might not look like it on paper. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Okay, so let's have a little look at League One West then. So um, this was all looking so good up until a couple of weeks ago. This this was, and, and just when we started going, you know, this is getting tasty. This is getting really, really interesting now. Um, yeah, it all kind of went a little bit weird. So last Saturday, Krummer had a walkover against Lechie Wanderers. Hendy beat Aberystwyth. I, I wasn't seeing that. I didn't clock that one at all. And then Velen Voyle pushed Newcastle Emlyn really, really close. Twenty twenty three. Um, I, I haven't seen the story of that game, but that sounds like a really close game, which now means so Krumich have been top of the table for ninety percent of the season. Ninety <laughs> percent, and they're now going to finish in third. With Newcastle, so they're third with 88 points. And they've only lost two games this season. You know, that's they've lost two, drawn one. That's a good season. Normally, that would be enough to go up as champions comfortably. But there's a, you know, they're promoted, but, you know, you'd have wanted to be, with, with a season like that, you'd have wanted to be top of the table. So yeah. It was uh, that early draw with uh, Verlin Vol. I think it was the twelve all. You know mm. that you know that result goes you know the other way. That puts them tied with Newcastle Emlyn, and you know they'd be second on wins alone. Mm. But uh, you know it's, it's just a bonus point aspect as, that would have kept them below Slangenef. You know mm. that's what it has really come down to. The, the six points between first and third. This mm. is you know bonus bonus points really matter. No, yeah. that, that's what it has come down to. But, you know, positively speaking, it does mean promotion. There will be, you know, another Pembrokeshire side in the championship next season. So that's brilliant. Yeah. And depending on what that championship looks like and how everything, I think we're not going to see, we're not actually going to know who's going up into what league and all of that kind of stuff for quite some time yet. I think it'll take some time to settle because I've got a feeling that there'll be a couple of sides that might ask to be dropped the division. So when you look at where our sides are in this league now, so we've got Aberystwyth in sixth. They finished on 61 points. You've then got Whitland in 10th, 8th, 9th. Whitland in 10th with 11 points and then Pembroke propping up the table with minus four points. But Hendy, Whitland, Pencloud and Pembroke have all had points deducted this year for not being able to field a side. And this is this is League One. You know, we're not talking about Division Three and a couple of boys turning up and grabbing some boys out of the bar on the way to the pitch. You know, we're talking about 
League One. So I wouldn't be surprised for some of them to say, you know, okay, there's a lot of restructuring going on over the summer. Um, a step down might actually be a common sense option for them. So Division Two West, this is where Tasty doesn't begin to describe what's happening. So to give you an idea, of it, this is what's going to happen on Saturday. But this Saturday, last games of the season, Fishguard played Bury Port, Kidwelly played T. Croix, Nankaredi got home to Tembe. Okay. From results from last week, uh, so let's so Milford, uh, Ponte Berma forfeited their game uh, on Saturday against Milford. Uh, Carmarthen have forfeited a game this evening against Kidwelly. So that all goes into the mix. And then last weekend, as well, well Tembi weren't playing last weekend. Uh Ponte de Lais beat Mumbles, and that was that was we were expecting that to be closer. No, a lot closer than that. No, but 45 then, 17 away from home. Hmm. Oh, Mumbles were were still in the mix up until that point. Hmm. And and that's why we thought that might be a bit uh, you know, a bit better. Um Milford lost to, to Lucker, but Milford still put thirty one points on Lucker, you know, so fair play to fair play to them. Um Kamarthin pushed Nank Goredic. Now you said this last week, you know, didn't you? You said that that's gonna be a really, really tight close game. But forty forty six? You know, I was expecting ten, fifteen, forty six, you know? No, I, I know and you know, Kamarthin Athletic, they They've, they've struggled over the last month or so. I think they've forfeited about three games. Mm. Now, the only games they've actually played are the important ones. The, they've played Tembi, they've played Nantgeredig. You know, the boys who were in the promotion hunt, they've made sure they've put teams out for these games. And, you know, that if, you, if you're going to struggle with your team, you know, I, I think that's the best thing you can do. Make sure you play in the better team so, you know, the top end isn't so skewed. I know they forfeited a game against Kidwelly tonight, but Kidwelly are already promoted. Hmm. So that doesn't make much of a difference. But having said that, on Saturday, Bury Port, 44, <sighs> Kidwelly, 26. This, this like was to... the one. Oh, this, this, this was another game where I honestly thought Kidwelly would have come out on top. Hmm. Just because, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, it's literally what three miles, maybe four, between Buddyport and Kidwelly. They are two of the closer sides around you, and it it is such a big game. Kidwelly needed a point to go up, and Buddyport needed the five to stay in the promote, needed the win and the five to stay in the promotion hunt. Mm. And oh my God, they both bloody went and done it, didn't they? Not only did Kidwelly get a bonus point, but bloody Buddyport walked away with a five, and. I, I don't know how I'm feeling now. <laughs> well, what that push what that does to Tembi, so Tembi didn't play last weekend, and Tembi, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Tembi were in second. Tembi are now in fifth and only one point ahead of Mumbles. So but well, Mumbles we, are finished. Yeah, Mumbles are finished, but this weekend, so Burry Port play Fishguard and you're like if ever you needed a Pembrokeshire side to do you a favour this is the weekend because you know up until a couple of weeks ago it was between Tembi and Nanka Reddig it was all coming down to that last game of the season it was building nicely and then Bury Port have just put a string of games together and overtaken everyone so if Bury Port win on Saturday it's between them and Nanka Reddick. Yeah. Well, you know, third, fourth and fifth can all go up. Mm. And it, it it's just, it, it's what, like we said, it, it's what you want to see. I mean, I, I would have been happier if Tembi were automatically promoted by now, but uh, they, mm. there we are. But, you know, Nanka Reddick, they win with a bonus point. You know, they're up. That's it. But, mm. you know, they've already lost to Tembi once a season. Mm. Buddy Port, you know, they they've got to beat Fishguard with a bonus point and hope that Nantgeredig don't get a bonus point or mm. they don't win against Buddy Port. 
And then for Tembi to go up, they've got to beat Nantgaredig and Fishguard have got to beat Buddy Port. Mm. So well, it, it, it is... If, if Tembi... Like said, they, they need a massive favour. Mm. But, you know, if I'm looking in this table, I know Fishguard are bottom half. But if I was picking anyone from that bottom half, it would be Fishguard. They have pulled out some performances this season. Hmm. But if Burryport win without the bonus point and Tembi win with bonus points... Games then... one, Burryport go up. Yeah, because they'd have worked... Yeah. Oh, this is go. Cool. Do you know what? Saturday afternoon is going to be awesome for, for Division 2 is going to be awesome. So that is the last set of fixtures this weekend. So like I said, so Fishguard at home to Burryport, Kidwelly at home to Tikrois, and Nankaredic at home to Tembi. So, you know, that, that's, that, it gives us something else to talk about next week, mate, because that's going to be an awesome finish to, uh, to the end of the season. And I hope Fishguard can pull something out of the bag. I hope Tembi pulls something out of the bag and both teams finish with a with a bang for for this season. So just to say, where Milford finish uh, the season? So Milford have had a yeah, Milford have come close so many times. You know, they 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 really pushed a lot of sides this year, but always ended up on the wrong side. Um, so they won off the bottom on twenty eight points, um, but. You know, fair play to them. They, they, they've had some cracking games this season, and they're realistically, you know, ten points, ten points spread over five games, and they'd be mid-table comfortably. So, you know, compared to yeah, it's, it's it's been very. I, I know eleventh place out of twelve doesn't sound good, but you look at their results, and it's been a very respectable season for Milford. You know, it, it is quite easy for even two or three of those games just to swing the other way, and they are preparing themselves well at the table. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So let's have a look at Division Three then. So again, you know, it, it's all getting a little bit crazy. Um, really disappointed to see Quinns go down eighty-one nineteen to Cardigan. On Saturday, um, sounds to me like uh, like they need a forwards coach. Um, anyway, so Lampeter, are you, are you putting your hand up? No, my wife. My wife has told me I'm not allowed. To, it's so tempting. I, I, it's so tempting because I have I have watched uh, a couple of their games. Well, I've sort of watched a couple of parts of their games, and you can see where the issues are, and you can see. You know, yeah, it takes a little bit of development. It takes a little bit of now to to work out where where they need to be. But yeah, my wife's told me no. Uh, I, apparently, I do too much rugby as it is. So anyway, Quinns took a kick in against Cardigan on the weekend, but the game of the weekend again, Lampeter to Sinclair's. So second time in four weeks or something. When's the last time they played them? Was it the sixth? Yeah, yeah so, it's a week, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they played them on the 6th and then... The 13th. 13th. So, yeah, they've kind of had games in between them. They... So, Lampeter 35, St. Clair's 27. And that settles it. Again, you know, we were saying a couple of weeks ago it was between St. Clair's and Larne. Lampeter were in the mix. Then La- uh, Lampeter came and overtook everyone. And then you're just like, now Larn are just out of it, gone. And St. Clair's, those last two games, those last two losses, I've just hammered them, you know, really yeah, hammered them. It, it really sunk them. You know, that's I think that's three games they've lost all season. You know, one was a semi-final in the Division Three Cup, and then the other two to Lampeter. And, you know, watching all season... <laughs> You wouldn't have thought St. Clair's would lose to anyone in this league. So, you know, well done to Lampeter. They, they haven't just pulled it out once. They've pulled it out twice. Mm. And you know, they are confirmed going up as champions. Mm. It's just uh, waiting for confirmation on St. Clair's now. 
Yeah, and realistically, I mean, I can't see. So uh, the situation with promotion in West 3 is West 3 is split into A and B. So uh, St. Clair's are in A, and then B is more kind of Kamarthin sort of side of things. So Ammon United, Trin, Saron, New Dog Stars sort of a place. So and then so Ammon United promoted from West B and then Trim Saron. So yeah, they've they've finished, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. 83 points. So we spoke about this last week. Yeah. So 83 points. They're not gonna move off 83 points. And then let me just flick back through here. Let's get confusing now. Yeah, so Sinclair's on 96. So that's a rubber stamp, really, isn't it? They're, they're not even close. It's, I don't think there's a playoff or anything like that. And if there was, you'd expect them to to, to go up. But, yeah, I can see Sinclair's being promoted there quite comfortably. Well, fingers crossed they deserve it from the season they've had. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that will conclude... Our season, mate. That will conclude all the stuff that we've done. It's been a crazy, crazy season so far. It really has. It's um, it's been fun. This I can't believe it's been our first season. Do you know what I mean? And and <laughs> what an insane season to start a, a a podcast. But yeah, best of luck to everyone on the weekend. Um, fingers crossed it goes well for everyone, and we'll. Uh, We'll catch up and, and, and see where everything is after that. So, um, obviously, no rugby uh, uh, events from Scarlets this week, but you know, we were expecting announcements. Announcements were to be expected imminently last week. Um, and obviously, nothing, nothing happened. So, coaching and players and this, that and the other. But you, you reckon stuff's about to start moving again, Matt? Yeah, there is a board meeting this evening. Hmm. And, you know, from what I can gather, this board meeting is happening just to, you know, rubber stamp everything, make sure everybody knows, you know, everybody involved with the board knows exactly what's going on. And then the announcement sh- should come thick and fast. You know, right. that's what I'm hoping for. Cool. You know, I mean, they, they could probably, you know, Maybe look at doing something a bit better with their marketing, you know, because uh, this uh, the the season ticket release was uh, kind of naff, if yeah. I'm honest. But uh, yeah, you know, the it's, sooner we fans get some news, the better, really. Yeah, I mean, it slipped completely under the radar, didn't it? The season tickets and all of that, and you look at everybody else has been banging on about it for a month now. You know, as the season comes to the close, you do your early bird offers and all of this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it's one of those. It's one of those areas that definitely needs improvement. There's a lot of areas that need improvement. That's definitely one of the areas that needs. Improvement. Yeah, and it's, it seems to be a pretty simple one that they should have been able to get sorted. I mean, the fact is, when you look at the season ticket, you know they, uh, well, the offer, as we should say, you know, they don't have any benefits as it stands. To be yeah. confirmed is what's written there. You mm. know, uh, how can you be, you know. May the end of a season, and you don't know what benefits you're offering for the next. It's, it, yeah. it's really poor. And there's only so much of this we can blame on the WIU, isn't there? There's only so much of this that we can go. Do you know what? Um, we were waiting. All this, you know, we should have had plans in place. There should have been stuff there ready to go. You know, this is scenario A. This is scenario B. This is what's happening, right? Okay, we're going with scenario C, which is a half of A and half of B. But do you know what I mean? We this should have been preparation there. This should have been, and the communication through this season, uh, I, I would have expected more. I think my my expectations of what to expect from, you know, one of the biggest sides in Wales, um, I, I've been left disappointed by what we've had from the club, but I'm hoping that they can, you know, put stuff in place now for next season and go, right. Okay. This is, this is what we've got. This is what we're going to do. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, we, we're waiting to hear, but,
but we're hoping that the next couple of days there'll be stuff around who's uh, who's coming in to replace various coaches and players and this, that and the other. So, uh, w- one other thing that I just wanted to, to mention, Scarlet's related. So, it's kind of Scarlet's related in that it's based at, at Parker Scarlet's. So, there's a, a sporting memories group that is going to launch. So, uh, down in Pembrokeshire, this might not kind of be relevant for, for us, but if anyone is in the area, I think this launches, yes, May 31st. It's a weekly session uh, on every Wednesday between 11 and 1 in Parker Scarlet's Cafe. And it's about really just getting people together and talking about um, old memories. So, you know, it's it's great to kind of catch up with people and to, you know, remember some of the games from uh bygone eras and and what have you particularly for the older generation um you know and it's nice to remember that they were part of a community for uh for a long time and and what have you so yeah um it would be great to to see that being a, a success um yeah. and if if anybody is around in the uh, uh in the area and fancies Doing a bit of recording for us, recording some uh, some of the old guys' thoughts about some of the games that they used to go to, and this, that, and the other. Um, you know, I'm sure we can do something uh, on that because that'd be great to hear. You know, people talking about some of the games that that you know I've only seen on tap. I'm wondering if anybody would bring up New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think? <laughs> I, I think that's that's probably well May thirty first it starts, so that'll probably take us through till twenty twenty eight. I think <laughs> yeah. you know the New Zealand game. <laughs> but no, it, I, I know this is targeted. It, it says you know, uh, I think it's older supporters, so you know fifty plus. So mm. that's you a category, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, I even though it's targeted, that I think it'd be good for if some you know younger generation, you know, people do go and listen to some of these stories, some of these memories, because there's so many games that you know we weren't born, we weren't alive for, or we were we were children for, and just to hear it would would be amazing. Just to get, just just listening to the the feel, the atmosphere, because you know I I only managed to go to Stradi a handful of times, so. Mm. To, to hear the stories of it would that be absolutely amazing i i played on Stradi once uh as a, a county under 15s uh and, and we got absolutely stuffed but it was it was it was weird it was one of those i i, I remember sticking in a couple of heavy tackles on uh, the wing and the fullback and like a couple of people go, oh, you dirty bastards and all this kind of stuff. But it was quite legal. But it quite. was quite <laughs> quite is the word you use then. I, I, I was anyway, the point was is, is to <laughs> um you know, just being in Stradi Park in the changing rooms and running around the pitch and all of that kind of stuff was quite it was an experience. Like my dad was super excited by it. Um and and it kind of passed me by back then. It was just a pitch. It was just uh, you know you're 15. You know it doesn't really mean much to you. Um, but yeah, it would it would be nice to hear memories like you say from way beyond our time that where it was a different environment and all that. Especially seeing we're, we're you know we're losing so many of the legends of the club. You know we're we're losing people who have, have built a lot of the reputation that the Scarlets, you know, now stands on. So it'd be good to hear people talk about their times at at Stradi and what have you. So if we, if we can get some recordings from that, then we will, that would be great to hear. But um, yeah, if not, and and you're attending just uh, yeah, enjoy that one because it sounds like it's going to be good on that. And I think that's it for the week, Matt. I think we're done. Well, we've got we've got a bit of uh, uh, other rugby going around that we could have a chit chat about. You know, we've still got you know the Welsh Premiership. You know, that's heating up. We got Llandovery in the final, so that's brilliant. Um, obviously, Samson Lee didn't play in the knockout round. You know, he, he just played in the last regular fixture. 
Hmm. And you know, we got a it's, a it's a big European weekend with the two finals coming up. So that's always another one. You know, will Glasgow carry on and finish the job against too long? Because they, they damn well better do. Because I'm not going to be happy if they don't be too long. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's all stuff that is going to be interesting to talk about. But yeah, it's, we'll have a chat about it next week. Everything kind of wraps up this. This weekend is officially now the last weekend of the season, and it is nothing planned after this weekend. Uh, I, I think the league is the, the, the dates are to the 27th because there are quite a few teams with some games left to play. But I don't think anything is on the line. I, I don't think you know titles mm. or promotions are you know, mm. really a thing at the minute. Other than you know the the finals, the you know, obviously the Premiership, Cardiff, and every final that is that is a winner winner takes all situation. Mm. Same as with the Europeans and the the URC. So, you know, there's there's nothing community-wise going on that's going to be affected over the next week or so, other than other than Division 2, which is what we're bouncing for. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we've still got stuff to talk about next week. Um, and uh, no doubt there will be hopefully some some announcements for us to discuss next week as well. Uh, so we'll talk about it then, Mark. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Some good news coming in. Yeah, fingers crossed. Okay, mate, we are done. Short and sharp this week. It's nice. <laughs> you you can go um, and do your uh, dressing like a princess for your birthday party now. Yeah, I got get my makeup sorted. You know, my <laughs> I think I got my hair appointment at one. Uh, should I get my nails done as well? Oh. I would, mate. I would. <laughs> I, uh, you, you can't do it half-hearted. You know, you got to go for it. Got to do it properly, mate. Got to I'll do be it. a full drag queen by the end of the day. <laughs> Nothing would surprise me, my friend. Nothing would surprise me. <laughs> On that note, mate, I shall say farewell and uh, we'll catch up. We should do it all again next week. Uh, good talking to you, mate. I'll see you again. All the best, mate. Ta-da. You have been listening to the Westerer is Besterer podcast from the Scarlet Supporters PEMS team. You can follow us on Twitter on Scarlet PEMS, find us on Facebook with Scarlet Supporters Pembrokeshire, or email us on scarletspems at gmail.com. And remember, West is best, but Westerer is Besterer. Cheers. Podcast Network.